Hi, I'm Lior Weinberger, and I'm excited to tell you about our work on engineering viruses to attack themselves. So this is a, a really radically different approach that my lab is pioneering, and you might ask, why would you want to do this? So to give you an, uh, help you understand why we're doing this, I want to give you a vision of the future. So 100 years from now, I think someone will be lecturing to medical students, and they will say the following. 100 years ago, back in 2016, we used to treat bacterial viral infections, pathogens, which do two things really well. They continuously change, adapt, mutate, and they spread from person to person. They transmit. They do these two things really well, and we used to treat them with these static chemicals called pharmaceuticals drugs, which don't do either of these two things. They don't mutate, they don't transmit. And because of that, back in 2016, we had these terrible drug resistance epidemics where we couldn't treat infections because the viruses and bacteria changed. And we had out of control epidemics because we couldn't get the drugs to enough people quick enough. Okay, so come back to the present day. <laughs> what we're trying to do is build therapies that can solve this mismatch between the chemicals, which are static, and the biology, the viruses, which mutate and transmit. And to explain to you how we're going to do that, the beginnings of what we think are those therapies, I want to tell you about viruses. So this is my prop for a virus. This is my six-year-old's toy. It makes a pretty good virus, though. Of course, you know, these are terribly small. Uh, in real life. Viruses, you need incredibly powerful microscopes to see viruses. They inf all, all a virus does is it, it's a parasite. It infects a cell, it invades a cell, gets itself inside one of your body's cells, and takes it over, hijacks it, hijacks the machinery, the, the protein nanomachines that Sandy talked about, and turns that cell into a factory to produce more of this, more virus. And the way it does that is, now this is the beautiful thing about this toy, Right? <laughs> it opens up. This will become important in a second. And inside of this shell, which is made up of proteins, by the way, well, we'll put it over here, and it'll do that. Yeah. OK, inside is the code, the genetic code. Right? This is the software, the DNA, which the virus, after it infects the cell, injects into the cell. This code, it's a string of letters, A, T's, G's, and C's, are the instructions, the software, for the virus to hijack the cell and convert it into a factory to make more of the virus, which is really just this and this. That's what the virus does, makes more of these two things. And the code, this long list of letters, codes for these protein nanomachines, and it also carries instructions for itself. That's the red part I've highlighted right here. It's typically a small part of the virus. And this says, once you've made, once the virus has made this code, and it gets folded up, or whatever, it's done, whatever happens to it, that red part says, package me back into myself, back into the protein nanomachine, so that when this virus erupts from the cell, it goes off and infects the next cell and carries its instructions to make more of itself again. Right? So that's the red part, the packaging signal, we call it. OK, so that small part. So that's all the virus does. Gets inside the cell, uses this code of genetic material to make more of this and make more of this. And in doing so, it makes usually thousands of these these particles which are carrying the DNA inside, and destroys the cell as it's doing that. That's part of the reason we get sick from viruses, is the cells that the virus infects have a specific function. They're supposed to do something. And when the virus takes it over, hijacks it to make it into a factory to produce more virus, the cell dies, and it can't do that function anymore. It's part of the reason we get sick. So we have drugs which attack these viruses at different points in their life cycle. Some of the drugs target the DNA replication. The virus is making thousands of copies of this DNA to fit inside the thousands of copies of the shell that it's making, right? So there are lots of drugs that target this replication of the virus, of this genetic material. There are drugs which target the protein nanomachines on the shell of this virus so that it can go and infect the next cell. And the problem is that these chemicals that we use to do that target specific parts of the virus, say this little blue nud right here, right? 
And every time the virus replicates its DNA, it makes a mistake because it uses a nanomachine, a protein nanomachine that's error prone. So it makes a mistake. That mistake ends up changing this three-dimensional structure of the shell so that that little blue knob is no longer visible to the, to the drug, right? It, the chemical that we created was targeting this little blue knob over here, but now if the virus has changed slightly, the drug doesn't work anymore. And the virus is doing that incredibly quickly. Every time it replicates, it does that. And that's the problem we have with drug resistance. So how do we overcome that? Because these viruses are always changing, the chemicals are not. And the way we do that is we took a hint from nature. We knew that these long strings of DNA had parasites of themselves that were just a partial string, about this long, okay? And so what we're doing, <coughs> our genetic engineering, making, that was dramatic, huh? <laughs> making these long strings, and then, now this long, this, this short string, sorry, can't code for any of the nanomachines to make more virus. This is a parasite of the parasite, right? I have another one over here, okay? So this is the full-length virus that takes over the cell, turns it into a factory to make more of itself. This is now a parasite of this. This short piece doesn't have the code to make more of its nanomachines. They're all coming from the full-length virus. But what it does have is the little instruction to itself to get inside. So now, when that factory, the cell, is making these viral particles, what comes out is a virus carrying the short parasite piece. And since it's so much shorter, it's made much more efficiently, this small parasite piece. We call these interfering particles, or therapeutic interfering particles, because they interfere with this long piece. There's much more of this. It competes with this long piece to get into the shell. And since there's so much more of it, it does a much better job competing. It's a competitive inhibitor. So now this cell, which is was a factory to produce virus, has become a factory to produce the therapeutic particle. And these particles can infect the same cells as the wild-type virus does. They go and they infect that next cell, but now that cell gets infected with this small therapeutic piece. And so the next time a wild-type virus, which is the full-length virus, sorry, infects that next cell, this parasitizes again. And what comes out of that next cell? The therapeutic particle again. So I'll just keep on looking, using these. So the whole idea is to build these, these parasites of the parasite, which turn the cell into a therapeutic factory instead of a virus-producing factory. Now, those two barriers, those mismatches that I mentioned at the beginning, right? The viruses mutate, the, ther the therapies, our drugs don't. This solves both of them. How does it do that? So the first one, the mutation aspect, right? I told you this is making a mistake every time it makes a copy of itself. And those mistakes turn into changes in the structure. This short piece doesn't carry any of the code to make more of itself. It needs this full-length virus. And so every time, the only way it makes more of itself is by using the machine that this full-length virus used, which is making mistakes. So this is making the same mistakes. They're in the same cell. You make just as many mistakes in the short piece as you do in this full-length piece. So, and in that way, this short interfering particle co-adapts. As this changes, this one changes at the same rate. In fact, a little bit faster because it's shorter and made more efficiently. And so in that way, we think we can start to make therapies which are resistance-proof because they continually adapt and change along with the wild type. The other aspect, the transmission, turns out the amount of virus of these particles you have in your body dictates how frequently you transmit virus. An infected person transmits virus. The more virus, the more efficiently transmission, the more efficiently that person transmits. If we're replacing this full-length virus with this short code of virus, what's being transmitted? Well, there's much more of this short virus now inside the body. So the thing that's being transmitted more efficiently is this short piece. And in that way, you can start to produce a therapy which can transmit 
both between cells and even between potentially individuals. And there's some precedent for this that I'm happy to mention during the question and answer. Um, but I think I'll, I'll stop there and turn it over to Kathy, who will be telling you about the next level of engineering, which is cells. Yeah. <coughs>